Well, I first became interested in Scrap and Valley as a customer of, of the old Temple Inland Company. I buy products from Temple Inland and now uh, GP, but uh, I came out here after they renovated the uh, lodge and went through the property looking at it. And so when I heard it was for sale and Lloyd and I came out here, um, I knew instantly that I wanted to try to uh, protect some of it. I think that the what I like about Longleaf is that I like fire and I like grass growing below trees and grass and uh, fire are natural for Longleaf so that's that's predominantly why I like them. I also have had a lot of success um, selling uh, poles for telephones and uh, anybody that gets a few checks doing that is going to uh, want to plant Longleaf. No, I've never been intimidated by the RCW. In fact, that's one of the reasons why uh, Lloyd and I were successful uh, bidding on this property from International Paper was most uh, of the people bidding were scared of the red cockaded woodpecker. I'm, however, opposite. What a red cockaded woodpecker likes is what I like. I like the big long leaf with the rolling hills, the grass growing below it. And uh, so, I mean, I'm, whatever they like, I like. I like big trees. My main um, focus on land is I, I don't hunt, I don't fish, I don't play golf. I walk through the woods and uh, I picked that up from my dad in the 80s. He started doing the same thing. And so if you're that kind of bent, if you like walking through the woods, you got to have pretty woods to walk through. And so that's, that is the main focus of why I got involved with scrapping is because it's absolutely the prettiest place in the woods to walk. One of the biggest things about scrapping is, is my family, my son and my wife, we believe that we're just the current uh, custodians for the uh, part of scrapping that has the woodpeckers. Um, the Temple family uh, bought it, I think in about 43, and uh, I know they won a Longleaf Award in 1988, but when you go through a track of property and you see flat top Longleafs, you know that somebody has been nurturing a piece of property for a long time. And so our philosophy is, is that um, we're just the current custodians and um, we're going to do an easement with the Nature Conservancy and we're going to try to protect it beyond whatever span the Duncans are involved with it. And I, I know um, that um, easements are just paper but our hope is that uh, the Nature Conservancy can keep this thing uh, going for eternity. I burn a lot. Um, in fact, my philosophy is, is if, 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 uh, if something doesn't like fire, it's not going to work well with me. And so I try to burn a lot. We've done some logging this year, and so we hadn't burned much this year. But I expect us to burn about probably um, six to 700 acres a year and I subcontract it all out. I, uh, I know you can buy insurance to burn yourself, but um, I'm not going to try that, so I use contract burners. Well, on my part of scrapping, there's actually 50-plus-year-old uh, um, slash, 50-plus-year-old uh, uh, loblolly, and um, I'm not doing any clear-cutting um, because I don't, I like to see trees, but also I've got woodpeckers. And um, I'm moving away from uh, both loblolly and slash uh, to longleaf, and it's predominantly for uh, being able to sell as poles. I mean, the, uh, I think we cut, this year we're cutting 50 something loads of poles off of our property. And, uh, you know, the economics are, uh, the landowner, uh, in, in this case us, this year is getting $56 a ton for poles that will probably get 20 to 24 a ton for loblolly uh, saw logs. And so uh, the economics are there. Okay, well, well there, there's really just not much choice in my mind. If you're in a longleaf area um, and, you, and you're planning on planting and, and growing it out, if your children are on board, uh, there's no question you ought to be going longleaf uh, and going for poles, which means that you've got to manage the track for poles, which means thinning at the proper time, thinning properly. Um, but there's, there's, in my question, there's no question 
in East Texas, you should be growing longleaf for poles. So I have a safe harbor agreement on this tract. Um, the, the, the history of the tract is, is that this is one of the areas that uh, Temple moved the red-cockaded woodpeckers to when they relocated from other areas. And so there's a safe harbor agreement, uh, and I'm required to have one anyway. But a landowner that's growing big trees should have a safe harbor agreement anyway. Uh, they, they need to have the flexibility that if they're going to grow big, pretty trees and they encounter some woodpeckers, they need to have the option of being able to call uh, the Texas Parks and Wildlife and having the birds removed. Uh, you shouldn't grow big trees and not have a safe harbor agreement. Yeah, the Louisiana pine snake, the last uh, known location in the wild in East Texas was on Scrappin Valley. It was about seven years ago. Uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife has trapped for um, probably six of the past seven years. And then I got a grant to continue trapping uh, this past year and this year. And uh, to my knowledge, uh, no uh, pine snakes have been found, but this is prime habitat. The Texas Longleaf team has uh, really been a big help to me. They have introduced me to a lot of different organizations and also resources. There are more resources to somebody that wants to get into longleaf than you can shake a stick at.